This question appeared in NEET PG 2018 and the question describes a 47 year old man who is under treatment for HIV. He presents with vomiting and confusion and if you see the blood pressure is normal, pulse rate is 80 per minute, respiratory rate is 16 per minute and when you do a lab investigation serum sodium is 120, serum potassium is 4.2, serum uric acid is 2 mg per deciliter and the patient is not edam edematous. The most likely clinical diagnosis is and your options are hepatic failure, severe dehydration, cerebral toxoplasmosis with SIADH and congestive heart failure. Now, before I take you to the explanation of this particular question and how you could have very easily solved this question, let's learn a very very important and high yield topic uh, for examination that is SIADH. Now what happens in SIADH? So first let's understand what is ADH. ADH is basically anti diuretic hormone also called as vasopressin and you know that you know under the uh, you know it is secreted from posterior pituitary okay and essentially it will act on two receptors P1 and V2. V2 receptors are present in your collecting ducts or collecting tubules of kidney and there the primary function of this particular hormone is to uptake water okay so it will reabsorb all the water now remember here no electrolyte is absorbed only water reabsorption happens under the influence of vasopressin from v2 receptors when i talk about v1 receptors these are present in blood vessels and they cause vasoconstriction okay and both of these under normal circumstances under the effect of vasopressin will have help in increasing the blood pressure okay now what happens in SIADH because of some primary pathology there is an increase in the ADA secretion okay there is an increase in the ADA secretion now when it comes to kidney because of the increased amount of vasopressin a lot of water will be reabsorbed okay so one clinical feature which you are going to see in this patient is scanty urine scanty urine okay now when we talk about the effect on the blood vessels causing vasoconstriction and it causing an increase in bp remember all the other parameters are normal here only vasopressin is being increased so all the other compensatory mechanism will so whatever increase in the bp has been caused by the volume overload or the vasoconstriction that is counteracted or you know compensated by other other compensatory mechanisms in the body and we know that bp primarily is under the influence of aldosterone so in this case even though there is a scanty urine even though when there is a volume overload okay uh, okay retention of water in the body but remember the bp in these cases will be normal will be normal so how these patients will present with obviously the primary symptoms or whatever the disease of the primary pathology will be there we will see that and then scanty urine with normal bp okay so this is about sidh clinical feature when we do a lab test when we do a lab test so because water has been retained so there will be a dilution of the plasma so plasma osmolarity will be decreased urine okay urine is very very concentrated because water has been uh, removed from the urine so urine osmolarity will be increased now because of the you know water retention the sodium levels will fall down even uric acid levels will fall down and sometimes even potassium you know because of dilutional it may be falling down okay so very important sodium and uric acid level will be falling down but remember this is what we called as u volemic hyponatremia why u volemic because the total amount of sodium is constant when we talk about hypovolemic hyponat hyponatremia the amount of sodium is actually reduced. Hypervolemic hypo, hyponatremia, the amount of sodium is increased. Okay. 
but here it is u volumic hyponatremia which means the total sodium content of the body is remaining the normal but still because of the water retention you are going to have hyponatremia there is a separate class on hyponatremia you can go and have a look at it complete all the different types of hyponatremia has been explained but here you understand it is u volumic because the total amount of sodium is constant but still you are having hyponatremia so these are the lab findings what do you do you know to uh, what is the investigation of choice interestingly it is fluid challenge test okay what we do we give no matter how much fluid we are giving because of the adh there will be scanty output of urine okay so that is the investigation of choice so this is about the uh, you know pathogenesis and clinical features and how, what are the lab findings of sidh very importantly you should know and there have been couple of questions on the causes of sidh okay so let's quickly enumerate all the causes of sidh the one of the most common and important causes can be trauma both open as well as perforating traumas can be you know a uh, cause of sidh then you know cns infections like meningitis encephalitis okay in fact in hiv patients toxoplasmosis okay toxoplasmosis becomes a very very important cause of sidh you can have some vascular causes in brain for example you can have i know vascular occlusions which can manifest as sidh you can have hemorrhages in the brain which can you know manifest as sidh you can also have cavernous sinus thrombosis so any kind of vascular damage to the brain may again manifest as sidh there are some very interesting respiratory causes also which will cause you know sidh and these respiratory causes one of the most important causes asthma second positive pressure ventilation also you know can cause increase in the vasopressin levels uh, you know production then you can have pneumonia and tuberculosis also sometimes increasing the level of production of vasopressin and presenting as sidh then very importantly multiple times it has been asked okay what are the drugs which can cause uh, you know sidh so one of the common drug is desmopressin because it is basically antidiuretic hormone desmopressin high doses of oxytocin high dose of oxytocin okay very importantly vincristine vincristine okay cyclophosphamide right there are some uh, you know serotonin reuptake inhibitors or tricyclic anti uh, you know antidepressant or monoamine oxidase inhibitors again these classes of drug can present with sidh and very interestingly nicotine okay nicotine will also be uh, you know can present as a another very important drug which can present and we can have a side effect of sidh and which has been asked in the examination is carba mazepin okay the anti epileptic carbamazepine can also you know have sidh as it's one of the side effect and lastly there are some cancers which are you know are implicated in sidh which can cause sidh so oat cell carcinoma carcinoid tumor and last is thymoma so the list is pretty big but there have been so many questions on the causes of sidh that i have listed it and almost you know you get the idea that what are the important causes of sidh the drugs have been asked multiple times the causes you know the cancers which are implicated in sidh has been asked and even the respiratory cause has been asked so all these this is a very very important slide and so many questions have been asked now once we have learned this let's look at this question because one of the option is sidh so let's look at this so he is a 47 year old man with hiv okay and now he is presenting with vomiting and confusion so this may be a neurological you know infections which we are looking at so lab investigation 120 so, uh, so serum sodium is
Now, now let's look at this question and try and solve it. So a 47 year old man, he is a patient uh, already under treatment of HIV. He is presenting with vomiting and confusion. So we can think of some neurological infection which might be happening. Interestingly, the BP is normal, pulse is relatively normal and respiratory rate is also relatively normal. We see sodium is falling down, even potassium is you know normal, but uric acid is falling down and patient is not edam, edematous. Okay, so what is the most likely diagnosis? In hepatic failure, again, because the patient is not edematous and there is nothing mentioned of yellowing or any other hepatic symptom, we can easily rule it out. Dehydration can be one option, but you know, in the dehydration, you will not have serum uric acid being falling down or potassium, yeah, you know, uh, sodium may fall down, but uric acid may not. So severe dehydration again, uh, you know, can be ruled out. Let's look at other options. Congestive heart failure can definitely be ruled out. Uh, respiratory rate is normal. Pulse rate is normal. BP is relatively normal. So, you know, so all these things can be ruled out. Cerebral toxoplasmosis with SIDH, given the history of patient being HIV, you know, uh, neurological symptoms are there, sodium is falling, you know, uric acid is falling, patient is not having edema. So this becomes the best option. Severe dehydration, we can, you know, if there is too much of vomiting, then this may present, but then there is no reason why uric acid has to fall down in severe dehydration. Okay. So this is a very, very, you know, a very important uh, a concept, SIADH, multiple times it has been asked and I think with whatever we have learned in today's session, you will be able to answer any question on SIADH.